crazy. <laughs> it was really fun. But now the boys are ripping into me. I can never quite do enough for them. It's Tommy and Jules' first season down here at Bondi. The swell's up. I told them, go get your wetsuits on. We're out there. Here we go. Are you nervous? Oh. You know why you're nervous? You put it back down the pocket. For Tommy and Jules, the mission is simple, to catch the biggest wave of the day and prove themselves to the older guys. Tommy's confident. I'm not losing the <laughs> I was nervous, but it was really cool to have Jesse backing us in the water. All right, you all, the second one, all right? Here's the step. Here's the step. Here's the step. <laughs> Handling a rescue board in these waves requires perfect timing. Paddle hard! Go, go, go! <laughs> that was the biggest handbrake I have ever seen. I do admit, I did pull back on that one. Next, it's Tommy's turn to impress the judges. Oh, Tommy, Tommy. Tommy. I wanted to catch the biggest wave of the day. You either take off and survive. No. Nah. Regret it massively. <laughs> Smoke. Fall off in the big stuff, and you'll need more than just good board skills. Can Tommy swim? Oh, I hope he can swim, <laughs> I don't think he can swim, mate. I don't think he can swim. <laughs> <laughs> Jules gets her second chance on another big one. Go, Jules! Go! I was like, yeah, I'm on. Score! And then at the last second, no, nah, not ready. That was crazy. <laughs> it was really fun. But now the boys are ripping into me. I can never quite do enough for them. So I have to go back again. Go, Yules! Go, 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 go! Go on, go on, go on. So then the next big wave came through and I just thought, there's no way that I'm not going for this one. Well, they released that handbrake, Jules. So I just put my head down and just went for it. If Jules is too far back on the board, she'll miss the wave. Go, go. Too far forward and she'll nosedive. <laughs> Jules really impressed me that day. In the end, she ended up getting a bomb, and she done me proud. So she can hold her head high. That was sick, Jules. So I'm happy with that, but I got smoked coming in. <laughs> so we're here at the Northern Beaches to uh, train the crew to get ready for the race. You know, we want to put them through their paces, make sure they've got bit of mental fortitude, know they've done the work and uh, perform come race day. I would just like to do this event and walk away being proud of myself. Soft sand, that's the hardest running you'll ever do. So Courtney Hancock has won the Nutrigrain Iron Woman Series three times. To be able to share that knowledge with Joel, Jules and, and Jeff, I feel really proud to be their mentor. Oh, so yeah, Bondi's lifeguards are incredibly fit, but can the training techniques of Australia's top iron men and women take them to a new level? Out here today was some of the most testing conditions. Um, the way they've improved throughout this kind of boot camp we've done for them has, has been incredible. The question now is whether the training has turned one of these lifeguards into the next Bondi champion. Yeah. All right, so we'll head down to the boards and we'll start. The course begins with a board paddle from Bondi around the headland to Tamarama Beach. Next is an 800 metre swim to Bronte. The final leg, a two and a half kilometre run back to Bondi. Intimidating doesn't even cover it. Like, it's horrific. Like, the energy that they bring and that male ego and testosterone. Like, I literally start every event like this almost in tears, just freaking out. <laughs> Jules, along with Jethro and Joel, will have their secret weapons to support them. I really wanted to do myself and Courtney proud, and I just really want to have a go. All right, you ready? Sure. Yeah, go. Yes. go. Go, The race is handicapped. Jules goes off go with Mario. Can I ask you an update, mate? Top three is Mario, Jeffro, and Juliana. Oh, Jules and is there. Yeah. Oh, Jules is still in third. Oh, yeah. At 
Tamarama, the field is bunched up ahead of the swim lane. It was pretty solid at Tama. So yeah, it was just nice to get a wave, stay on the board, hold the board and just get in in one piece. Yeah, we just got Mario, he's turned the body first on the swim. Jules. All those boys, keep it up. Can't he can't. Jeffro, Jeffro does look like Jules, so it's hard to get mixed up. I went in a completely different spot to all the guys and I just got shot out to the can where the jet ski was. Killing it, killing it. Next is Jules. Just behind Harry's, but ahead of Chapo, is Jules. The training hugely paid off. I felt like I was in a team and I was doing it for both of us, so it was really cool. Thank you so much. That's the view out there. I mean, like, straight from the start, smart, just went around the wave and then took the best line, so all the boys followed you. It was just so good to see. I was just down doing a bit of a roving patrol. Um, I was down in the south corner, and then next second, someone out in the surf was screaming and yelling and, and kind of waving at me. I think I've just got someone in the water that needs some assistance. Coffee, Jules. Oh, looks like they've done their shoulder, maybe. A young woman is being kept afloat by volunteer lifesavers and members of the public. I got there and the girl was being held. She was in excruciating pain. Something was horribly wrong. <laughs> After she was violently dumped by a wave, the woman must be supported by volunteer lifesavers and members of the public. Minimising movement in the ocean just adds a kind of extremely difficult element. The spinal board is on its way. But in the rolling surf, Jules must find a quick solution. I need to get this girl on a stable platform and out of the ocean. Three, when you count, everyone has to turn into the body, and we have to raise her. I think she's going to try and put them on the board, but I'd rather they just wait yeah. until the spinal board. I had to improvise, so I just went for it. Uh, actually, they did it pretty smooth. This one's too bad. Assisted by volunteer lifesavers and members of the public, Jules must get the woman through the surf without any sudden movements. There's a huge amount of responsibility when dealing with a spinal. Your treatment could be the difference between them walking home or them going home in a wheelchair. Every time she screamed and cringed, I swear, like, I felt that. I just kind of went into action mode and autopilot and started yelling out orders to people. We brought her in and just lay her down on the board in the sand. And I guess that was when we started to really assess like her symptoms and, and what was happening. So what's your name? Yeah, you can swim out there. Sammy is at the beach alone. And is the pain just in your neck? Okay, back in there. Did you get dumped by a wave? Mm -hmm. All right. Central to Lockie. My ambulance will be on its way. What do you guys want to do with the patient? Do you want to stay down there or come up here? Yeah, we'll stay down here for the moment because now. Lying precariously on the edge of the board, Sammy must be stabilised. Sammy, what we're going to do now is we're just going to get you a little bit more straight so you're more comfortable. When they're feeling a lot of pain, it's really hard to treat because you, you don't want them moving their head or their neck, and quite often when they are in such distress, they'll do that. Every summer, lifeguards respond to dozens of potential spinal injuries. Most of them suffer no permanent effects. A handful aren't so lucky. Can you move your feet? In 2011, Brazilian man Leo tragically broke his neck in Bondi's shore break. We're just going to give you some pain relief, Sammy, all right? So as soon as it's ready, we'll get you to suck on the green whistle. 
An analgesic gas offers the lifeguard's strongest form of pain relief. Big breaths, the imaging in the <laughs> Doesn't taste very nice. It's, it's okay, just... It's like medicine, so it's going to taste a bit funky, but it's so important... It's just important that, that you get it in, yeah. <laughs> it's like shit. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's going to help nice. you all right. A head-to-toe assessment will identify any loss of feeling or motor function. Can you just wiggle your toes at all for me? That's a really bad sign when someone has no feeling in their feet. Um, it's time to really start thinking about, you know, serious spinal damage. Sammy's symptoms indicate a potentially devastating spinal injury. The question now is whether or not it's permanent. Your left leg is numb. I felt you... numb when I hit my oh, the pain. Bit of pain. In my back. Right, That's just, all right. Just take breathing. This... Remember, take deep a whistle breath. in. Nice deep breaths. As lifeguards wait for paramedics to arrive, Sammy makes a shocking revelation. I broke it before. Okay, so how long ago did you have you broken your neck? A year and a half ago. And what were you doing a year and a half ago? So I just kind of took a breath. She could have completely re kind of cracked or broken something here. For the symptoms that she showed. That was the most serious case I've dealt with. So we're going to put a collar on you, all right? I guess I was fearful that she might lose her ability to walk. Lifeguards wait in hope for news that Sammy will make a full recovery. Poor little thing, hey? 20 years old, young. I didn't even know what to think when she left the beach. I was kind of like... Just doing some really deep breaths, trying to kind of process it all. Um, but yeah, I was so concerned for her because it was just a massive unknown. I'm glad this is Sammy from yesterday. After being cleared of serious injury in hospital, Sammy has returned to say thanks. When I went underneath the wave, I kind of like tumbled and smacked the back of my head against the sandbank. The quite back hard. of your head? Yeah. yeah. It was pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jules is on the beach, actually. Get Jules to come up. Lucky to Jules. The girl you brought out of the water yesterday is up at the tower, if you want to say hello. Yeah, copy. Thank you. I was pretty excited because I was thinking, OK, well, if she's here, she's on her feet and she's walked in, so this is fantastic news. How are you? Um, feeling a bit better now. What was the verdict? What's um, if my C7 and okay. I aggravated my C6 again. I've got full feeling back in my arms and legs. Yay, that's fantastic. <laughs> Happy days, you're smiling. <laughs> bit different to um, yesterday, isn't it? Hopefully, You yeah. won't forget this trip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. To have people come back and, and truly thank you and mean it, yeah, it's really special. Wobbles or no? No. No, no goggles. Okay. What's his name? So Pari. So Pari. So Pari? Yeah. This man from Cambodia has lost his 10-year-old son, Saparath. Do you just want to say his name? Uh, so Parath. So when lost children are last seen in the water, alarm bells ring for lifeguards. You don't know how well he can swim? So if he has gone in the water and there is, is such a crowd, it's easy to lose someone like that. Number one concern, we have a missing child, um, a little Cambodian boy, aged three, and he's been missing since the 11th of May. Um, he was found in the water and he's been missing since the 11th of May. There's thousands of people down here, so it's pretty hard to spot him, that's for sure. We're trying in English and Cambodian. English is much better. Much better? Yeah. Oh. He had really bad English. My Cambodian's terrible, so, you know, it was really hard to communicate with him. So, pardon, we have your father here. If you have been swimming and you've lost your dad, we have found him. Sam is in his first year at Bondi. He focuses on the water, but experienced lifeguard Jules thinks otherwise. I just thought, well, 100%, my gut feeling is this kid is not in the water. They're just lost on land. We've been driving around for 15 or 20 minutes and he decides to let me know in casual conversation that his wife is also down here and he does have a car. Is your car? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Straight away I'm thinking, well, 
a kid's first instinct is either go back to the car or find mum. So, I think we need to try and find the car. Yeah, I'll be fine down here. And I thought, this is going to be super easy. Go find the car, locate mum, child, done. So maybe you park on this side of the cafe? Yeah. Maybe? We couldn't even find the car. The case of the lost kid is becoming the case of the lost dad. Or did you park near a children playground? Like near the park here? And we'll walk this way. Yeah, the language barrier was unbelievable. I mean, we get that. That's like, that's not a rare case down here. Did you walk down a lot of stairs to get to the beach? Yeah, I, a lot of stairs. That stair. I just did a whole lot of hand moving, backpack walking. I came from here. Yeah, and you walked this way. Okay, yeah. okay. So we will walk this way. Okay. Okay. As humans, I think everyone knows. You just figure it out. You just do a lot of expressive stuff. <laughs> Yes, this one? Yeah, yeah. Where's, where's oh. your wife? Maybe he changed the car. Are, no, are car. you sure this is your oh, car? My, my, my wife changed the car. Finally, the car is found, but it's empty. This is your car? Then, this, yeah. a familiar face. And I'm thinking, well, this is great. We've, we've found your car, we've found your wife. Where's the kid? But was smart, Mom. I tell you, I'm going to go and then next second... <laughs> the kid just kind of pops out from behind mum and, and steps in front. And, you know, I was wondering why mum looked so cool, calm and collect and was looking at dad kind of funny. The kid was with her. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. He disappeared before telling me. Yeah, yeah. He needs to work on really knowing where his belongings are.